What's going on, guys? I actually started getting, you know, almost a little bit upset when I saw the title of this video, Pregnant Vegan, and, you know, when the health of people, and especially children, and people who don't really have control of what they're being fed is at concern, uh, you know, we need to understand that the most important part of a diet is its nutrient density, and nutrient density is achieved through consuming high vitamin animal foods, as plant foods do not metabolize as well in the human digestive system, so... Uh, before we get into that in this video, if you guys want to clarify those things, I have a bunch of videos on fat soluble vitamins and things like that that I will link in the description. But for now, let's just jump into this video and kind of just go over the meals, talk about the pros and cons, and any just maybe her behavior in general. Good morning guys, welcome to another video. If you're new around here, my name is Jinty and I filmed this video a couple of days ago and last week's video I told you guys that I was pregnant. So in this video it's going to be a little pregnancy update and I'm going to share with you what I eat as a pregnant vegan mum. So yeah, that's what this video is about and I will mention one other thing. When I watched the video, I was like, am I like really whingy? Do I keep do I keep whinging? So I just want to make it clear that I'm just so incredibly grateful and feel so blessed to be pregnant and truly love pregnancy. But yeah, sometimes in the first trimester it can be tough and that's just the reality of it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section and if you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports our channel. So yeah, let's get into it. I hate to talk about how cookie cutter vegan diets are, but I think the last like three or four vegan day of eatings I've watched, they start with lemon water. Yummy. Barley grass juice powder. I can't imagine there's anything in there besides maybe small amounts of certain plant vitamins and minerals. And spirulina, uh, we'll talk about it afterwards, although it is a better source of carotenoids because it converts at a better rate and has amounts of omega-6 I believe what is it let, let me just look at it right now actually spirulina contains pre-converted gamma linoleic acid from the parent omega-6 fat and essential fatty acid which unfortunately is not DHA <laughs> okay so for breakfast we're having porridge we've got some nut milk some cinnamon and some dates there I'll show you how I make it This meal right here, the problem with the oats, the nut milks, they are incredibly high in phytic acid, oxalates, lectins, saponins, trips, and inhibitors. There's a lot of anti-nutrients in these grains, and the way to reduce them is to soak them. And I do not understand why I don't see more vegans soaking their grains. I don't understand why I don't see people, you know, you need, don't just need to soak it once, you need to remove you know, you need to soak it with salted water, rinse it a couple times, soak it multiple times to reduce the anti-nutrient content. And in the case of this, you have the oats, which have a high anti-nutrient content. You have, and then you have two nut milks, which have a high anti-nutrient content. So you're pretty much taking a huge amount of phytic acid in this meal, which is inhibiting any sort of mineral absorption you might have whatsoever. And in regards to what might have trace amounts of even even the nut butters, it's just going to be some fats. That's all it is. And then a bunch of other anti-nutrients because they're nuts or seeds. And then you have the fruit, which might have a small amount of water-soluble vitamin C. But then w what's the point when, you know, at best case scenario, what's this meal? If we consider the spirulina and its bioavailability, let's say the vitamin A is getting absorbed. Maybe she's getting a small carotenoid content for this meal. But these other foods, the spirulina... You know, pretty much it's a nutrient void meal because of all the anti-nutrients and just the actual base vitamin content of the food. It's not there. It doesn't exist in this meal. Hey guys. Okay. Breakfast is done with. In this video, I'm going to share everything I eat as a pregnant vegan person. <laughs> and I also want to fill you guys in on a few things because I feel like it's been a massive few months. You guys know we stopped traveling because I wasn't well and I want to update you on that. 
my health, how this pregnancy has been going, just how I'm feeling. I feel like I wasn't ready to share the pregnancy for a while and there's so much I want to update you guys on and fill you guys in on. So yeah, that's what to expect in this video. I've got to go to this appointment now and yeah, I'm going to show you everything I eat. And who knows, maybe I'll be nauseous later and won't be able to eat. We'll see. Every day is a new day. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to drive. By the way, I'm in my mum's car. And Keys to the Benz! Keys to the Benz! I wish I had a Mercedes now. It's so nice! I'm just like... Oh. <laughs> Alright, bye! Okay, I just got out of my appointment and... So I know kinesiology has to do with the human movement system, but I don't, I can't really speculate on why she would need to see that doctor or, you know, what she's seeing it for, so. It went for so long. It was super interesting. So I am hungry. I actually drove past like a vegan place on the way here that I might stop and get a snack there. And I've got some oranges. There's like three cut up oranges I've just started eating. So I'm going to eat these, maybe stop at that cafe and then I think Chris will have some lunch for me when I get home. So I'm this is crazy. She, she, didn't she just have a big bowl of oats and she's now she's eating three oranges and then and she's talking about eating when she gets home. I, I just skipped like three minutes. She was just selling out Audible for three minutes talking about audiobooks. So I am still not home and oh my gosh, I feel like I've been out all day and I haven't eaten. Oh, and what, else? what do you mean you haven't eaten? You had a big bowl of oats with fruit and all these plant milks and fat almond butter for breakfast. And then you ate three oranges, but you haven't eaten. I'm going to tell you guys is that like it's super important for me not to get hungry right now because I start getting nauseous. And then when I, it's like I can't eat and it's the weirdest thing. It's just pregnancy um, and I'm starting to feel sick. So I'm going to really try to get home now. I just have to stop at the post office and eat. So I think Chris is going to have some food ready for me. Bless him. Um, but yes, I'm going to go do that now. It's worse at night for me right now. I haven't even hardly been eating dinners. I've just been trying to eat really early. So we're meant to have some friends come over tonight. And we're going to have Thai because there's a Thai restaurant that does has a whole vegan menu. Um... So I think that's going to happen, so we'll see if I can eat it, but I need to get home ASAP to eat those uh, three oranges, just like definitely one enough right now. Um, yeah. All right, I'll see you when I get home. Okay. I have gone two weeks without eating. I've fasted for two weeks on a carnivore diet, and this girl can't go an hour or two without food. Something I also want you guys to keep in mind is in the context of indigenous diets, not only did they prize animal foods, they only fed like pregnant and nursing women the highest quality animal foods. They saved them the liver, the, the fish eggs, the fish roe, any high quality animal food that they had access to, they gave it to the pregnant and nursing woman. It wasn't just meat and fat, they gave the best parts. So not only is just consuming animal protein and fat not adequate for a pregnant diet, you literally need to consume those super high vitamin foods to be in optimal health. I'm home and I really hope I can eat because I feel, oh, that was so much like hours longer away than I thought I was going to be. Oh. Hey daddy. Hey. Oh. Where's Aya? Where'd you go? She's in the room, she's asleep. I better go find her. Oh, oh, what's that there? Who's that just there? It's a dedicated hider. <laughs> Is that Aya? Oh! <laughs> hello. Mummy's there. <laughs> oh, hello! <laughs> oh my gosh, I miss you so much. Do you have food here for me? Alright, so Chris didn't have the food ready and I nearly killed him. Uh, but I've just got a heap of boiled Chris didn't have food ready and I nearly killed him. Is that is that normal behavior? Potatoes, lettuce, tomato, cucumber, red onion, a smashed avocado all through this, uh, lime, the juice of a, a whole lime, a little bit of salt, and then some coconut aminos in a salad. And 
So, you know, to me, that salad, hey, you know, there's honestly nothing, nothing wrong with eating something like this. There might be some oxalates in some of the green vegetables, but overall, uh, I think it's a fairly low inflammatory to most people meal. It tastes pretty good. It's a good source of energy, but is it a good source of vitamins? The only real thing in this meal that has vitamins might be the avocado. Now, what's interesting is the reason she had to add coconut aminos and salt to this is because on its own, it wouldn't taste too good. And for those of you who don't know what coconut aminos are, it's this delicious like fermented tree sap. It's like sweet. It's salty. It has this umami flavor. It's almost like soy sauce. It makes this meal palatable, so to speak. But overall, you know, maybe she's getting carbohydrates, maybe small amounts of certain plant vitamins from the avocado, but the bioavailability of nutrition from this meal is fairly low. Although, you know, compared to her first meal, it's miles better. Lime, a little bit of salt, and then some coconut aminos in a salad. And, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry, it's ridiculous. She's so hungry, it's ridiculous. Like, is this, this behavior that we see in vegans, I'm so hungry, it's ridiculous, this hangry behavior, at what point do these, like, are people in their lives not telling them how they're behaving and how they're acting? I probably have food all over my face. So, the past month, I've struggled so much with food, having crazy food aversions. And the same thing happened when I was pregnant with AI. It's like, I never know what I can eat. Um, if I eat something, it's like, I'll never be able to eat it ever, ever again because it, the thought of it makes me want to vomit. And it's just like, it's pretty full on and it's getting better. But like I said, night times have been the worst lately, which is sort of strange, but definitely going to be able to eat and enjoy this salad, which is really nice. But yeah, I'm going to do that right now because I need to eat. I was just so hangry at Chris and I thought I asked him to have food ready and I'd eat whatever they had for lunch, just whenever I got home. And he didn't think that, but anyway, they had some potatoes cooked. But when I walked in and he's like, there's no food you never wanted, like you didn't tell me you wanted food. I was literally like, I'm gonna kill you. That's what I felt like, I was like, oh my God. So probably gonna have to apologize to him. Maybe I'm the crazy person, but is this like, how, how could someone behave like this? I mean, especially even saying things like that on camera. I mean, I don't know. It's so good eating salads again. For ages, I just couldn't even stand the thought of eating greens. It was like a couple of days where I ate. Couldn't stand the thought of eating greens. Maybe your body's telling you that all these anti-nutrients in these vegetables, these goitrogens, these nitriles, these mineral and vitamin inhibiting compounds, maybe your body doesn't want them anymore, especially during your pregnancy. Rice crackers with avocado. So she just said all she craved was rice crackers with avocado. And that's really interesting because rice crackers are a very energy dense source that's not too harmful in anti-nutrients. And avocado is probably the highest vitamin and healthiest food that most people consume on a vegan diet. So it would make sense that maybe the two best sources of energy and nutrients in her diet were all she was craving. I think for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I couldn't think of eating anything else. At the moment, I'm just, all I wanna eat is fruit. I'm loving salads, and then at night time, I'm sort of struggling. But yes, it is definitely getting a lot better. Um, but I'm just trying to eat as much nutrient dense food as I possibly can because for a while in there I just Wasn't really getting many nutrients in because I couldn't eat it like I felt so sick So I just went with that and now it feels nice to eat good food again I just thought whilst I finish up my lunch I could talk to you guys a little bit about my pregnancy so far I'm, I asked on Instagram what you guys wanted me to talk about and you had loads of questions and stuff, so I think I'll just talk about a few of the things you were interested in. So I'm like 11 weeks pregnant now, and it's been really different to when I fell pregnant with Aya, just because when I fell pregnant with Aya, I wasn't expecting it, and so I feel like I spent those first few months of pregnancy really like, it took me a while 
to just accept that I was pregnant and that this was what was happening and to just sort of surrender to that. Whereas this time, it was definitely like a conscious conception and it all just felt right and good. And so yeah, that was different this time. When I found out, it was just a really nice thing. And it's like I already knew, <laughs> I don't know, it was just, I didn't have to deal with that unexpected news or anything like that this time. But um, it's been super emotional. I feel like the past few months I've just gone on like the most intense emotional <laughs> journey. And I totally just think that that was intensified by this pregnancy. So if you've been following along for a while, you know that when we were in Indonesia, we sort of decided to stop traveling because I hadn't been feeling well and we came back to Australia and we took a lot of time out and I started feeling so much better just nourishing myself, getting back into good routines and habits and I was juicing and just eating an abundance of amazing foods and I just started to feel so much better especially in my physical body and the symptoms that I was having in um, Bali just started going away but what happened is I started going through some really big emotional stuff so she said you know she wasn't doing so well in Bali and then she got back to Australia started nourishing herself and what, what does she mean by nourishing her understanding of nourishing is eating these vegan plant foods which is very far from the truth and unfortunately we don't know too much about this woman's medical history her past problems and complications but we don't know we also don't know what medications she might be taking so we can only speculate and say that obviously this girl has not been well for, for periods of her life before this and that possibly could be exacerbated by her diet like the biggest emotional shifts that I've ever experienced in my life and it was a really sort of hard time. Uh, it was good too. I learned a lot about myself and I feel like I've come out of it so much stronger and just more sure of myself that yeah, wow. So I went through a lot in early pregnancy and whilst I was feeling so much physically better and it felt right for me to conceive, like Chris and I just both knew it was the right time. But yeah, it was a very emotional time and I feel like now I'm experiencing like the nausea and the nausea, like I hate that word, how do you say it? And just the fatigue of, you know, first trimester pregnancy. But I'm excited because I think a lot of it's passing and I really, really enjoy being pregnant. So yeah, that's sort of where I'm at. A few questions that you guys had. No, we won't find out the gender. We just love the surprise. I know a lot of people cannot stand that and they're like, tell me right now. But no, I love the surprise. I feel in myself that it is a boy. And I thought that before we even conceived that it was a boy that was sort of coming to us and what else can i tell you guys yes the bus build everything's going to go ahead i'll probably spend most of my pregnancy adventuring i'm just a little confused before she conceived she thought it was a boy how, how can you think it's a boy if you all right with chris and aya in the bus to me that's just like the dream pregnancy i know that once again a lot of people probably wouldn't want to do that or whatever but yeah um, I traveled my whole pregnancy with Aya as well and um, just being in the bus cruising along the coastline with Chris and Aya is like and being pregnant is an absolute dream come true for me so yeah the bus field is definitely going ahead and we're definitely planning on having a home birth where exactly I'm not sure yet we'll see how it all plans out where we'll be and where I where Chris and I decide we want to give birth and I'm excited about giving birth. I love the whole journey. I feel like the, for me, especially with Aya, the first trimester was definitely the hardest in terms of just feeling super fatigued and having really strong food aversions. And when that passed, it was just, I really love being pregnant. So I think that's gonna happen again. What else can I tell you guys? Yeah, food wise, I spoke about this just before. I'm just trying to eat as much nutrient dense food as my cravings will allow. But that's your understanding of nutrient density, unfortunately, which goes with conventional wisdom that plant foods are nutrient dense, which is the opposite. 
and I've had weird cravings for a while. I was just like craving junky food. I drove an hour to get a vegan burrito and I got there and I couldn't eat it. And now I'm like, I don't think I could ever eat a burrito again. I was addicted to sushi. I saw, in my last video, you saw us making sushi. Then I was like, then I was like, all I want to do is eat sushi. And then I made it last night. Yesterday was Christian's birthday. And so we made sushi for dinner and I could not eat it at all. And now I'm like, will I ever be able to eat sushi again? So the only thing I could speculate there is there's some, maybe some vitamin or mineral in the, I'm assuming vegan sushi, because I don't know why you're calling it sushi, but there's some sort of vitamin or mineral in it that she's craving, but then when she goes to eat the food, it also has a lot of the foods that contain anti-nutrients that her body doesn't want. That's my speculation on why she would crave those foods and then not want to eat them. So that's sort of what happens with me once I'm like all about a food and then I'm not about it at all and I genuinely feel like I'll never be able to eat it again because it's bad. You know what happens when you crave a food on the carnivore diet? You go cook it, you eat a few pounds of it, and then you're happy. That's what happens. That's what happens to cravings on a normal diet. Like, oh. Yeah, I'm eating basically, I don't know, maybe 95% organic. Um, so organic versus non-organic, and this is a whole video topic in itself. And yet, yeah, generally organic stuff is higher quality, but I mean, we're not talking about the context of animal foods here, but in the context of plant foods, yeah. I mean, the pesticides are less harmful, but they're still used. The fertilizer is maybe less harmful, but it's still used, and it's definitely not vegan fertilizer. I hate to break it to you. But the whole idea that you're eating organic and you're being healthier is, that's not, that's not what you should be saying. You should understand that maybe the soil that the organic vegetables were grown on is more nutrient dense maybe just just there's positive aspects to it that you have to understand you can't just look at paper value which is what vegans tend to do they look at the organic like if i went to the supermarket and i saw a beautifully marbled non-organic grass-fed steak and then i saw a lean grass-fed steak that had white fat on it i know which one i'm choosing i'm not just going to go with the label i'm just really want to be eating organic food right now and it's definitely available around where we're living, so I'm taking full advantage of that. And it might be much harder to do whilst we're in the bus. I have like got food everywhere, but I feel like you guys are used to that, so. But yeah, so this is it now, guys. Welcome to the pregnancy adventure. Let me know if you're pregnant too. I'd love, love to hear um, if you're pregnant and watching this. But yeah, uh, first trimester is tough <laughs> physically and emotionally for me and Chris has been incredible he truly has been amazing and he's just so supportive and he's really excited about the pregnancy and Aya is also so excited she's seriously gonna be the most amazing big sister and I'm loving just watching her on this journey becoming a sister and just already interacting with the baby in my belly and she's so maternal she's telling me that she's got a baby in her belly uh, she's got a baby in her belly and she's been carrying around her babies and looking after them and barfing them and talking about all the things that she's going to do with this baby and how she's going to share and just yeah it's a special time all right Aya and Chris are coming up now definitely owe Chris an apology all right talk soon all right, I'm just having one of these vegan treat things that Chris got. Looks like coconut and date and I don't know what else. But they're delicious. Coconut and date, I mean, pretty much empty calories, although, you know, it's nice to see saturated fat in a vegan diet. Unfortunately, neither dates nor coconut oil has a considerable vitamin content. Hi, guys. So I feel so much better now it's like really tired from getting home and that's definitely something i'm experiencing like if i head out and do stuff even if it's just like a couple of errands it like i feel really exhausted afterwards that i need to chill how is that you know how would someone a human who's you know obviously pregnant woman in nature would have been in survival situations in very high stress situations and they would have probably been active the whole day when even when carrying their child so how can someone go on a couple errands for an hour or two and be exhausted? So I'm just having a snack now. I'm having peanut butter dates on celery sticks. 
Okay, so she's eating celery with peanut butter and medjool dates. In regards to peanut butter, it can be very inflammatory in regards to high omega-6. I mean, it's a legume. It has various anti-nutrients. People might say it's, it's, it's funny that people view peanut butter as a health food when in most cases it's quite the opposite. What are they talking about? Aflatoxins here and mold it's if you just look at how it's made how peanut butter is grown there, there's much better options and and the dates and the celery i mean we know that sugar and celery is pretty much just fiber and it just you know how how many how what is this woman ate so far today and she's just complaining she's hungry every hour or two and i'm just heading out to visit chris because he's doing some work on the bus oh goldfish. There he is. I think I said that it was his birthday yesterday. You guys should leave him some... You can't see me. You guys should leave him some birthday love because... Woo! Happy birthday, Chris! He's awesome and because he is the reason that all of these videos even exist because he edits them all. So, leave Chris some love. How'd you go cleaning it? I'm uh, just starting now. You got any? These birds are so friendly. I know. They're the ones that like nearly landed on my head last night. Two times I've like come back inside and they've been on the kitchen bench. Oh. <laughs> I swear the animals around here know we're vegan. Just like those New York City pigeons that stand next to people eating hot dogs waiting for the crumbs to fall down. <laughs> they're like, they're just not scared of us at all. <laughs> oh. I haven't even told you, we're nearly leaving here, where you have to like clean this place up and then we're leaving. I think we're going to go to my parents and just like full on get this bus going. Remember when we said we were going to be in it like in five weeks? Oh. That was three weeks ago. I'd say like four weeks ago. Yeah. That was so cute of us. Anyway, our friends are going to come around, so they're coming soon, and we're going to have Thai for dinner, I think, and also make um, caramel slice. Uh, so I'll show you what we end up eating. And yeah, this is what I eat. Whilst pregnant, this bird's just like getting closer to Chris. <laughs> hey, Daddy! Oh, <laughs> Daddy's on the roof. Hi, you, you okay up there? Yeah. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We're gonna go inside and make some herbal tea. I'm drinking so much tea, mainly nettle, a ginger one, and then I'll show you this other blend that my mum brought. It's delicious. All right, I went with this one. It's an after dinner one, but. You know, my, my problem is like vegans don't care where their food's from as long as it's just vegan to pay for value. You don't know, you know, where that tea's from, how it was made, who made it. It's so good. It's sweet fennel, roasted chicory and cardamom. And then we're doing a three ginger as well. All right, I'll put up on the screen what is in the caramel layer. But this is Natalie's recipe, who's currently holding the camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, caramel layer. All right, so sugar arsenic and sugar, anti-nutrients and inflammatory omega-6 fats, and then saturated fat. The coconut oil being the only food that might not be inflammatory in that dish. And if we look at uh, organic brown rice syrup, it's pretty much a replacement for uh, high fructose corn syrup now. And, and they said there was an arsenic concern of it. So I didn't actually didn't know about that until I looked into it. Definitely something worth mentioning. I mean, tahini... Uh, just seeds in general, especially sesame seeds that are in tahini, you know, they're roasted, they're high in, you know, it's not like they're soaking them in salted water and rinsing them and reducing the phytic acid content. Very high in phytic acid, tahini is very high in omega-6 inflammatory fats, and there's no considerable vitamin content in any of these foods. This is just sugar, inflammatory omega-6 fats, and then just the beneficial saturated fats from the coconut oil. Now, if you remove the tahini and the rice mold syrup and just have the dates and the coconut oil, it might be mu it would be much less inflammatory, but still devoid of nutrients. Oh, but this is Natalie's recipe, who's currently holding the camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, caramel layer, and this is what is in it. <laughs> oh, 
yum. Okay, the guys just got back with Thai dinner and the slice is in the freezer. And we're gonna start with this and I'm so bloody happy about it. <laughs> so we got a red Thai curry. What's this one called guys? Tatsiyu. So it's like a thick noodle. And then I don't know what, they sort of scare me. They're sweet potato rolls. Oh yum. And then another curry, that's the Tom Yum soup. And then that's a ginger mm. stir fry. And then the <laughs> yeah, satay mm. tofu. And it's all vegan. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so. <laughs> Doesn't know what it is, but as long as it's vegan, she's gonna eat it. I may have tried to cut it before it was properly set. <laughs> But do you know what? It sort of looks so goddamn good. It does. Look at that. Okay, yeah. Alright, so that's the caramel slice. And definitely needs to be frozen more, but it's so delicious. Do you want to hop out? Okay. Did you want to say goodbye? Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Auntie. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you <laughs> next week. All right, guys, that's pretty much the video, and we can only really speculate on the Thai food, unfortunately, so let's just look at, like, a vegan Thai recipe. I was just going to assume the Thai food was, you know, it probably does contain, you know, inflammatory fats, particularly veg certain vegetable oils, refined, oxidized vegetable oils, as well as refined flours and things, and then just adding the those fermented foods that have a high histamine content that can be problems for people, but... No real nutrient density in that Thai food, and unfortunately, the only real nutrient dense food she consumed all day was the avocado mashed up in that salad. And avocado, you know, no vitamin A, but vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin K. I mean, if you ate five or six avocados on a vegan diet, then, you know, if you took the vegan supplements that I talked about the retinoic acid, the vitamin K2, the vitamin D3, the DHA, you might actually have a decent fat soluble vitamin intake, but you literally have to eat five avocados. So, uh, I mean, unfortunately, she's not eating five avocados and taking swigs out of an algae oil bottle. So, uh, you know, we can only just speculate that she's maybe getting, I don't know, five, ten percent of the necessary fat soluble vitamins to have a healthy pregnancy. Uh, what, what else can we touch on? Overall, just her diet is low in vitamins. It's very inflammatory, and just high calorie, low nutrient dense foods. I mean, if you guys, I don't really think I need to go, you know, you can Google all of these foods and anti-nutrients in them and their nutrient content. And uh, the, the hard thing for people to understand is that people don't know what makes a diet healthy. They don't know that fat soluble vitamin content is important and the difference in bioavailability between animal and plant foods. So if people don't know what a healthy diet is, how can they argue that a vegan diet is, you know, how they're supposed to know? So I can't really blame them. Uh, if you guys would like to support me, just check out, you know, check out the stuff in the comments, my social media, various things like that. Let me know how you like this video. And above all means, guys, if you do feel the need to share this or show it to people, just tell them, you know, hey, it's important to get certain nutrients from animal foods. That's the main premise. I don't want you guys saying, oh, she's going to, you know, I don't want any negativity from this video. If that's going to happen, I'm, I might have to stop doing these videos. And I know you guys like these. So let's just do the, the makeup check. For you idiots. See? Nothing on my shirt, guys. Don't wear makeup. Like, I, I'm i losing. We're going to... Frankie the Face is going to have to make another appearance. It just... So it seems. <laughs>